what teachings do you see led to the judicial judgment of God upon the church? Because that means you pretty much either think that the promises of Jesus in scripture are not promises of Jesus or Jesus failed one or the other. So we're talking about the gates of hell thing? Yeah, not the only that. We're talking about John 16, 12 to 13 and 2 Timothy 1, 13 to 14, 2 Timothy 2, 1 to 2, where there we're told that the Holy Spirit will guide the apostles in all truth. And then Paul says to Timothy, guard the faith by the Holy Spirit indwelling us. And what you've heard from me in front of many witnesses, pass it on to reliable men. So here you find the promise of God that the Spirit will always raise up and appoint men mm -hmm. To protect against heresies and heretics and this is what you find paul saying in acts 20 27 32 so that either holy spirit who's sovereign perfectly did his job and didn't have to wait for joseph smith or either he failed or these are not promises of god which is it oh i i i, I would i would disagree with the way the promises are interpreted well prove me wrong you can disagree okay. all you want show me what where am i wrong in second timothy 1 13 and 14 and 2 1 and 2 uh, what do those verses say exactly? It says, I, I, Paul is saying to Timothy, guard what has been entrusted to you by the Holy Spirit that's in us. So the promise of the Holy Spirit guiding the apostles to all truth is now extended to their successors, Timothy. Then he tells Timothy, what you've heard from me in front of many witnesses, pass on to reliable men. So this is the okay. this is the succession. Spirit okay. teaches the apostles. The apostles teach those who come after them. And by the same spirit indwelling them, they will preserve and pass it on. And that's why in Acts 20, 27 to 32, Paul says that the Holy Spirit raised up bishops, elders, to shepherd the flock from heretics and wolves who will try to destroy the flock. So where did that where did that promise end? Oh, okay, so so yeah, so the God, the apostles they themselves were um, guided the Bible truth, and that that's fine because I I don't think anybody in the at least nobody I know in the earliest church would say that the apostasy began. While the apostles were No, that's alive. not what I'm saying. You got to address the argument as I stated it. I didn't limit it to the apostles. They didn't limit it to themselves. Paul mentioned the elders after he would pass on from the scene whom the Holy Spirit appointed to protect the flock. So it is a chain that doesn't end with the apostles. It continues with their successors. So did the Holy Spirit do his job or he failed? So they were, they appointed, they, the apostles appointed men to protect the flock by who by whose oh, power by the apostles actually no, by the holy spirit acts 20 28 uh, this is the third time i mentioned it well acts i would 20, say 28. that even if if god that people people can fail their covenants in the bible you no, know that's well, you're attacking straw man here because the promise of the holy spirit preserving the leadership you won't find that in the old testament you find it explicitly with the apostles and their successors so Let's not try to do the tap dance. Let's address what I mentioned. I'm going to mention it a third time. Acts 20, 28, the bishops are empowered by the spirit to protect the flock from wolves and false teachers from their midst. And this is also in 2 Timothy 1, 13 and 14, 2, 1 and 2, which you have not yet addressed. So I'm going to repeat it the third time. Did the Holy Spirit fail or did he succeed? He succeeded because okay, that generation. So name the bishops of the second, third, fourth centuries that the Holy Spirit raised up and preserved and empowered to protect the deposit of faith. What are their names? Uh, well, I'm saying even if the men that the apostles appointed did their job does not mean that the men after them did. Prove it. Where does it say that the Holy Spirit would stop with the successors of the apostles, but the successors after them? He would then leave them to their own whims and desires. When I just mentioned to you that Paul said to Timothy, then you pass on to reliable men. So it is a chain. It doesn't end with just their successors, it continues with the successors after them. So prove what you just said, that it ended with the followers of the apostles. Prove it. What? Well, even so, it's like, I'll, I'll use, so I'll use, I'll try to use an analogy for how I'm interpreting what you're telling me. So if there's a group of men who say, hey, you guys are going to be protected by the spirit and you should also give, you also need to find good people to give your, job you know it's like no that's not the analogy see you're again attacking strongman because you can't answer my objection let me give you a better analogy you guys will protect the flock by the spirit and your successors will protect the flock by the same spirit indwelling you no, so he's, well, he says you should find men to do that and, these, not a, and they did find a, the men finish the argument and these men will then be empowered by the same spirit to do what you're doing after you how many times do i need to repeat those verses for you to get it 
No, I, I, I am here. I'm just saying. Okay, so what, will you answer the question yet or no? Did the Holy Spirit fail? Yes or no? No, God cannot fail. Men can fail. Okay, men so did the Holy Spirit fail in raising up able-bodied men and empowering them to preserve the faith? It, men could fail. That's not my question. See, this is the tap dance, and you're not going to last long if you do the tap dance. I'm going to ask you the fourth time. Okay. Did the Holy Spirit fail to raise up men that he empowered to preserve the faith? No, God cannot fail. Okay, so but now mention the men that the Holy Spirit raised up and empowered not to fail in the second century. What are their names? I, I don't I don't think that that's a biblical promise. Yes, it is, you. because let me repeat it again. Second Timothy. No, I, get okay. the, I get the argument. Okay, I, I, mention the men for the fifth time. I don't know their names. Okay, I'm going to give you one. Irenaeus okay. is the disciple of Polycarp, who's a disciple of the Apostle John. And he was the bishop of the church of Smyrna. Why is that important? Do you know? Off the top of my head. Because Smyrna is one of the two churches that Jesus praises in Revelation as maintaining faithfulness and not being corrupt. And by the way, that tells you what Jesus does to corrupt churches. He removes them. He doesn't let them to linger on. But that's another point. So Polycarp is one of those men who comes after John, appointed by John, who has the Holy Spirit empowering him to preserve the deposit of faith. And Irenaeus is one of his disciples who becomes a bishop in Lyons, France, and he was martyred. Now, Irenaeus teaches, for example, water, baptismal, regeneration. His view of the Godhead is not your view. It's Trinitarian, and he doesn't believe creation ex materia, and he believes in things that you would reject. Now, since you disagree with him, was he a true Christian? Yeah, well, I also... I. In my view, if you're willing to say that Jesus is your Lord and Savior, died for your sins, you're a Christian. So I would even say like John. Okay, but the whole problem is Paul says there are different Jesuses, different spirits, and different gospels. So not everyone who says Lord, Lord shall enter the kingdom of heaven. So you're saying that Irenaeus, who taught that Jesus is the Lord who exists before all matter, who in union with the Father and Spirit created all matter, not re reorganized matter, he's still a true Christian? Yeah. I mean, I don't. But at the same time, I, I, I view, yes, because, I mean. And he so doesn't for, believe the father has a body of flesh, by the way. Yeah, I mean, I would, I mean, but again, it, we're kind of, uh, that's a probably not a good question, because I, I, but I will say, I do have a question. At what point, at what point in church history are we allowed to have bishops or people in a, in a position of authority at church that have heretical ideas? Heretics were there in the time of the apostles. That's not the point. The point is, no matter what age you look at, there will always be true Christians empowered by the Spirit to expose the heretics and their heresies. There are heretics at the time of Paul. That doesn't mean the church was corrupt because there were true men of God empowered by the Spirit to condemn the heretics and expose their heresy. And that has, has been the truth ever since the inception of the church. And it didn't somehow stop as a process in time where the church had to be reorganized, what's the term? Re restored, restoration. That's why you call yourselves the Church of Jesus Christ Latter-day Saints because the church needed to be restored. So there's always been heretics. They were there at the time of the apostles. But that's my point. Because God is faithful to raise up true men and women filled with the Spirit, they yeah. will expose the heretics and their heresies and protect the flock, and this will be the process by which God always preserves the true church from the inception of the church until the return of Christ. But you don't believe that.